back to the Engine Performance Expo. Big thank you to all of our sponsors and all of our viewers out there. We've had a great couple of days. It has been so much fun, but I got to tell you, Lake, I'm super excited about this because, you know, we talk about it all the time that this sport, this trade, engine building, cars, car culture, drag racing, motorsports, it's a, it's a family thing. Right. The family that races together stays together. I don't think there's any other sport, maybe there is, and you can definitely, uh, you know, get me on email if there is, where uh, so many families, like grandfather, son, grandson, uh, you know, fathers and daughters, fathers and son, uh, are, are all out there competing and sometimes against and with each other like that just doesn't exist anywhere else <clears throat> you know maybe bowling but uh, <laughs> maybe bowling but that's it here we, we've got the Stanfields we've got the Dortons we've got the Morrises Kyle welcome of course uh, along with Steve and Keith and Jeff and Greg and Aaron it's just just great uh, perfect examples of uh, like passing that knowledge down the knowledge the passion and you guys are out there doing it together like that's that's what people dream of to be able to keep the kids interested mm -hmm. out of trouble moving forward and doing something that's going to like benefit their life and you get to do that every day steve yeah it's a uh, yeah <laughs> it's it's a blessing and i'm i'm thankful for it i mean uh outside, outside of uh making sure that we don't uh kill each other or because <laughs> we see each other all the time he just recently moved out of the house, so that's been good. It's given us a little bit of separation. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it, um, it's been something I think about, and I, I see uh, other people, especially in our industry, and and uh, that uh, some of the what I, I would call them, like you know, the founding fathers of like uh, like Sonny, or even even John Cosby's out there. I mean, that uh, don't have a son to take over. You know, and so I'm just very thankful for that. I, I think it's... Well, you just shared a story about the machine shop owner. You're 21 years old and he's like trying to, you know, sell you his shop because there's no one else. And you, you, you've got all this knowledge mm -hmm. and passion and you want to you wanna share it, right? You want to share it. And you, you, fortunately, you have someone to share it with, Keith. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm very, very blessed, as Steve said, you know, that, uh, you know, when I started the business, uh, you know, Jeff was just, you know, of course he wasn't born when I started the business, but, you know, we're trying to make it grow and trying to pay the bills. So his first years, he was, he was almost like a single, had almost like a single parent because dad was always working. Yep. And it was only <clears throat> when he got up in age that, you know, hey, I'm missing something, you know. So we started <clears throat> go-kart racing and it evolved and then our relationship become closer and uh, of course then when he you know at that time also he was sweeping the floor helping learning you know where boats go and yep all of that and the uh, things back where you found them <laughs> yeah, and, and now you Aaron, know, Jeff and Kyle we all can relate <laughs> yeah, to all yeah, this there. <laughs> now it's reached the point where he's teaching me you know, so, and I'm sure you're finding the same thing, uh, you know, both of you that, now what he, the big thing is, <laughs> the big thing is these, uh, the electronics that, you know, gosh, I'm too old to learn, you know, so, but even the mechanical stuff, uh, when he went to technical school, you know, I didn't have any training, so he was able to teach me, well, this is the way you machine this part to, uh, you know, I wouldn't take nothing for the relationship. Of course, if you come to our shop, you know, it's uh, Jeff and myself, my wife and my daughter, and quite often the two granddaughters. So, you know, again, we're very blessed. You know, ain't all old roses, oh. but, but we, we certainly, uh, you know, uh, it, it's just such a blessing to, you know, be your family. I don't, I don't know how people do it that their children or the grandchildren live on other parts of the country and you only get to see them at Christmas or whatever. So, and I, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Mm -hmm. you know? Greg, what, what about you? You know, well, your, your son has followed in your footsteps. Yeah. You're obviously, you guys are together. You're happy. He's got a grand, he's, you've got a grandchild yeah. now, but. Ours is a little different because, you know, I know not only build the engines we race. So, you know, we're racing together as long, you know, as well as building engines together. So we're, you know, it's, we get to work hard in the shop and we get to go race and enjoy it. So uh, 
it's definitely he he's he's helped me a lot and keep me in this sport and keep me going. Without him, I probably wouldn't be here. You'd be on the beach. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> we hear about cocktail with the umbrella. Yeah, I hear still about try that. to sneak off you every now and then. It's like, where's dad? He's gone. He's on the beach. He's on the beach. Jeff, uh, what, what about it? You know, working with your dad, there's, uh, you know, if you watch modern culture, movies, books, there's so many storylines about the, uh, you know, the hard-headed relationship between <clears throat> fathers and sons and a gross disagreement. There's a saying about, you know, like when I was 20, my dad didn't know anything, and when I was 30, he knew everything. You know, what, what, what's your uh, opinion of working with your dad and the relationship? Well, it is, it is a blessing, and um, when you think you're right and you think he's wrong, and you better, you better think twice, because... Normally he's not wrong, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but uh, we do work well together, and um, you know, it's just I don't really consider it work. It's just something I enjoy doing, and uh, uh, I'm very blessed. Did you ever consider not getting involved in the the engine trade or following down the road your dad has? blazed uh you know there are other other people we had a, a young man in here yesterday he's going to work on skyscrapers right it's like hey i'm uh, i'm going to do something a little bit different but um was there a time that maybe you thought you know what i, I don't want to do this no um i've always had the interest in the engines and um there was a point in time and i've had opportunities to to go to the you know cup guys um glad it didn't because uh, now that none of those are still here, <laughs> uh, so uh, it's uh, yeah. I, I've always had an interest in engines and trying to make things better, and, uh, and it's worked out very well. Kyle, you're the uh, the youngest among the the kids in the group. Um, you know, what's your opinion of the business? following down the road that your dad has blazed to the trail, getting involved in the family business. Obviously you want to sustain it, you want it to thrive, and maybe you are bringing some new ideas, new generational ideas. Uh, you know, I think about exposure on social media. I think about, I know you guys have a YouTube channel. I know that you guys have embraced a lot of uh, that. What's your take? You don't think Steve started that? Well, <laughs> he did. Actually, I did. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just trying to keep it going. But. There you go. Yeah, so he, he brings in the, the more youthful side. I, I see things that I think are, oh, that looks really neat. That's really cool. And he thinks, those wheels are, that, oh, that yeah. is so 1980s. <laughs> like, oh, wow, I oh think it's, it's cool. very dated. And then it's just like, I tried to bring the cutting edge opinion. I try to keep my finger on the pulse of like what people are thinking in drag racing a lot and try to bring that to him, to his generation. And then he brings a lot of good generational knowledge back to me. I think we work really well together that way. And since you're talking about that, like where do we, the older folks, find right. out the pulse of the drag racing community now? <laughs> if you want to share it with us, we'll listen. Yeah, I mean, anything from just watching the television to scrolling through social media. I mean, I know like that's like one of the biggest complaints that it seems like the older generation has on younger guys. It's like, oh, you got to spend too much time on your phones. But that's kind of where I'm, yeah, I know. That's, that's kind of where, like, we're learning some of this stuff from, you know, different social media pages, watching different YouTube channels. There's a lot of educational material available out there. Wait a second, there's actual information out there? Yeah, on the there? internet, they do have accurate information. You're not just looking at out. other people's lunches, uh, you know, they're tweeting photos of their meals. Right. Well, there's that too. Okay. You're sure it's all accurate? No. <laughs> it's not all that is accurate, but there's going to be a point now where, like, um, there's beginning to be a lot more accurate information put out there. Excellent. Do you find that, uh, and, and you know, for the for the younger guys in the crew here, um, people of your age, Aaron's 27, you're 21. Jeff, you're a little older. <laughs> I'm an old guy. What about your, you know, your your uh, your peers? Interest in the automotive culture, engines, speed. Like when you talk to people, that maybe you went to school with, right? And not everybody is into this. But are they interested? Like, what's the uh, the outside view of people your age of what you do? Right. From outside of the industry, it's a tough one to say. But I went to this uh, university, Northwestern Ohio, and almost everybody they went to school with, they all have a passion for the sport. But the trades are just paying them so much more money. They Like, nine times out of ten, they end up going right from, you know, wage to a trade school. Or they'll go right into the trades and become welders or whatever. But... Um, yeah Aaron what about you I think uh, you know social media is a big 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 platform I mean I have friends that, that 
that's followed y'all's YouTube page. So I think that's you know that's pretty pretty cool. Y'all have had an impact on people outside of drag racing or motorsports. So I think y'all y'all are doing great. Keep keep that up. But um, like as far as social media goes, I mean we wouldn't be seeing this information, this this great stuff here um, without without it. So um, I think it's an important tool. So I would say the the young guys could. We, we can definitely definitely help with, with, with those things. <laughs> well, I think there's been a misconception, I'm gonna call it a misconception, that the younger generation is not interested in motorsports. Yes. That they don't have cars, they have phones, they don't wanna have the license and all that. But I think that's not true. Yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 my son Benjamin's back, back there, right? So Ed Cooper and those guys from Rottler are teaching him how to run a home. And that's great and he's interested, he's, he's passionate now. His interest is maybe more, a little more airplanes and motorcycles, but it's still about horsepower, it's still about engines. So engines are still appealing to people regardless of their age. Yes, yes. <clears throat> All right, we're running out of time. I just got to admit that. I feel like this just started. This is so interesting to me. So we can do like a quick rapid fire. Okay, we'll start down on the end. Yeah, and we'll start with Lake, right? I know your dad's not here. No, but hi like, dad, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, as you're coming up and, and he's passionate and you're passionate and you're, you guys ever like, butt heads on a subject that uh you know and, and how do you resolve how do you guys typically resolve it and i'm going to ask everybody like you ever get to the point where like you just disagree like the father and son you're on different sides of a thing and and how do you work it out i mean i end up going my own way earlier in life that um as a teenager it was like you know you said whoever said it, you're, when you're 20 you think your dad's an idiot and all that kind of stuff and i don't think he was an idiot but it's like okay well you know racing is his thing that's not my thing you know, I grew up in the shop, you know, you guys ever worked for uh, room and board? And I remember that getting that lecture one time. It's like, yes. everybody else got the paycheck. I'm like, where's mine? Uh, room and board, son, <laughs> right? But that was a great lesson. Yeah. That was an absolute great lesson that just because I was pushing a broom in the shop didn't mean I had earned the right to get a paycheck yet. Uh, I hadn't proven myself yet. And but, so I appreciated that, that tough love early on, but I had to go find my own way for a little bit and then realize that something once I was on my own, that the interest in racing, the interest in engines drew me back. There was a natural attraction and magnetism in there, and I came back to it. And then when I made that choice to be in the industry, it was my own choice, and then I was full on in it. You know, that's how we end up here with this, is that I, I chose it on my own. But I did wander away for a bit, and but the greatest thing was going racing with my dad. When we started go-kart racing again because I grew up with the race. He was go-karting when I was before NASCAR when I was born and we traveled all around the country in an old Dodge van and the first time we sat in a vintage go-kart and I heard the crackle of that two-stroke and could smell the methanol and castor bean oil it was like being transported back in time <laughs> and that that blue go-kart with that 135 on it is my favorite thing I can sit in that thing and hear it and smell it it's just pure happiness it's it brings you back to those days of the kid, you know, and I do. It was so long answer to that question, but it, yeah, I had to go find my own way. But that wasn't his fault. That was my fault. What about you, Aaron? And, and I'm going to go right down the line because this is something like the, the transfer of knowledge and energy and life from one generation to the next. Uh, it's a big part of it. You and your, you and your pop. Obviously, I grew, grew up around it, um, but he never pushed pushed me towards it. Um, I went, went to college and, and just kind of made my own own decision that that I wanted to do it and he was ready to get out of it at the time and so I drug him right back in and uh, I tried to make him clean parts he tried to cure me with the parts cleaning but it didn't work um, but you know I kept pushing and and uh just been very very blessed you know yes we do we do my butt heads from time to time but um, I guess that's one thing he's taught me is is to be passionate and if you believe in something, you know, support support what you believe in. And you know, we do go we do go at it sometimes, you know, with our opinions. Uh, but we we're we're working towards the same common goal, and we both both understand that. And we both favor each other, work really well together. Awesome, good work, Jeff. Well, we don't so much about heads anymore because we've worked together so long now. Uh, but early on, we. The, if I'd say we'd butt heads about anything, it'd be about uh, some of our diverse work things because at that time we had so much NASCAR work and that was all I was like, yeah, I want to, I want to do this, and, you know, want, you know, see, see, you know, performance there. 
and um, we would take in, or he would take in, anything. <laughs> I mean, anything. Kill, I would be dead when I take in some of these jobs. <laughs> but, but the way the world has turned out many years later, that's what's made us a better company, and uh, that's kind of our uh, our niche, so to speak. They'll do it's anything. Diverse. You know, we we we're blessed to have the ability to feed off each other. Instead of butting heads so much, I think we we all screw up, we make mistakes, and but we can learn from them. But we and I hadn't thought about it until now. But we have over the years been able to feed off each other's what limited knowledge we have, and occasionally be successful at it. So. That's the team right there, Kyle. You and your pop. Yeah, going back to like what they said, you know. Despite the stereotype you might find of like father and son butting heads, I don't think me and him really butt heads hardly at all. I mean, except for like, you know, just the little stuff that doesn't really matter. But as far as like big blowouts, we've never had any. For the most part, he's thinking what I'm thinking and we kind of share that intellect the same way. But um, yeah, just that transfer of knowledge is just really good between us, I think. Well, tremendous. Yeah, it's, it's a competitive advantage in your business, actually. Absolutely. The fact yeah. that you can we're, feed off each other. We're always on the same page for the most part. Well, yeah. uh, let's oh, yeah. be fair. Uh, you know, you go back in the history of humanity. Isn't that the real reason that you have kids for labor? The agrarian uh, culture, right? Like we got to work this farm, man. We need it. We need kids. And so, engine shop, you don't need quite as many dads. Good job. Good job with the kids, dads and kids. Keep it going, make them proud. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, just a great uh, thing. And hopefully, my dad's out there watching as well. Dad, miss you. Uh, next thing we're going to talk, we're going to talk, uh, you know, engine balancing, and that means Mr. Rand Neal is yep. up on board CWT. Let's find out what he's got. What a day! What a day! What a day! Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars, we are not going to listen.